Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Still? Am I still the host? Hey. I'm still the host! <laughs> now, folks, if you saw my monologue on Monday, uh, you know that I was a little upset with Donald Trump for insulting a friend of mine. So, at the end of that monologue, I had a few choice insults for the president in return. I don't regret that. <laughs> I believe he can take care of himself. I have jokes. He has the launch codes. So, <laughs> it's a fair fight. So, while I would do it again, I would change a few words that were cruder than they needed to be. Now, I'm not going to repeat the phrase, but I just want to say, for the record, life is short. And anyone who expresses their love for another person in their own way is, to me, an American hero. And I think we can all agree on that. I hope even the president and I can agree on that. Nothing else but that. <laughs> and for once, for once, the big story today is not Donald Trump. It's why we have Donald Trump, James Comey. The FBI director spent the whole day on the Hill testifying before the Senate. You guys remember before the election uh, when Comey announced the FBI was reopening the investigation into Hillary's emails? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hillary remembers, too. Uh, <laughs> and yesterday, she proved it. I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the minds of people who were inclined to vote for me. You know, if the election had been on October 27th, I'd be your president. Yes, she'd be our president. And instead of half the country being depressed and the other half gloating, we'd have half the country gloating and the other half depressed. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> now, <laughs> in his testimony today, yeah. did you see any of the testimony today? He oh, was yeah. there all, yeah. all day. Yeah. Uh, he had the easy pass. He went on every ride. Comey, <laughs> Comey explained that he understood the impact of his actions. I've lived my entire career by the tradition that if you can possibly avoid it, you avoid any action in the run-up to an election that might have an impact, whether it's a dog catcher election or president of the United States. He should have stuck with dog catcher, uh, <laughs> because we know they don't grab pussies. <laughs> now, cat, 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 cat. You know, what? What do you? What do you? Now, Comey explained his agonizing decision on Secretary Clinton's emails. But I sat there that morning, and I could not see a door labeled no action here. I could see two doors, and they were both actions. One was labeled speak, the other was labeled conceal. Wait, so it was like one of those restaurants that tries to be too clever with the bathroom signs? <laughs> Let's see, uh, speak or conceal? Uh, men speak, uh, but women do also. Women wear concealer, but men conceal their feelings. Ah, uh, I give up. I'll just pee in the raw bar. <laughs> now, <laughs> to Comey, to Comey, at that moment, he says there was no good option. So I stared at speak and conceal. Speak would be really bad. There's an election in 11 days. Lordy, that would be really bad. Concealing, in my view, would be catastrophic. Lordy, so, <laughs> lordy, lordy. So he had to choose between really bad and catastrophic. The same things the voters had to choose between. <laughs> now, he made the decision. Hey, no, yay, yay, yay. No good choices. And he made the decision to reveal the investigation, even though he didn't really want to interfere in the process. This was terrible. It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election. Mildly nauseous? <laughs> Maybe it's morning sickness. After all, you did screw the whole country. <laughs> now, revealing... <laughs> Take your folic acid. Take your folic acid. Now, uh... Revealing the investigation was a tough call, but Comey says he stands by it. But honestly, it wouldn't change the decision. Everybody who disagrees with me has to come back to October 28th with me. Can I go? Can I go? <laughs> I just want to feel again. 
<laughs> but in the end, in the end, he has no regrets. The honest answer is no. I've asked myself that a million times, because, Lordy, has this been painful? <laughs> yes, James, it has been painful. But I guess the Lordy works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Lordy. Now, another guy... I feel ah! for him a little bit. I feel for him a little bit. You're feeling it, huh? Feeling it. Another guy who, uh, who's taken question in Washington today was press secretary and dad barely holding it together in the Six Flags gift shop, <laughs> Sean Spicer. Strange thing is, took questions today. Strangely, though, yesterday, he didn't take any questions. He just watched Mick Mulvaney speak about budget negotiations, and then Spicer just bolted. By location. Appreciate Sean, it. Sean, Thanks Sean, so much. Sean, please. Sean. Hey, Sean. Sean. Sean, I know it's called a briefing, but that was the briefest. <laughs> you got to stay, okay? You're the press secretary. America's tuning in to the Spicer Power Hour every day. You can't put up OMB director Mick Mulvaney. That guy's clearly just an opening act. It, it says right here on your tour poster, <laughs> Sean Spicer featuring the Mick Mulvaney experience. You're the headliner. <laughs> Seats reserved. The guy can jump. The guy can jump. He's got legs. <laughs> now, that audience there, the press, they were screaming for an encore so Spicer would come out and play the hits. Play larger. <laughs> <laughs> play largest inauguration crowd in history. Woo! <laughs> play. Play. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> Mispronounce something. Woo! <laughs> I'm not putting that back in my pocket. That is super hot right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, oh, Donald Trump uh, is. This is him. This is news with him. Donald Trump is still trying to repeal and replace Obamacare. So far, he just doesn't have the votes. Okay? Oh, no. Man. Listen, he doesn't Trump have the repealing, votes. Huh? Uh, but then again, that's how he got elected. Now, I still don't know, we still don't know, still don't know what's going to happen, but Republican leadership in the House is trying to rally the troops. Take House Majority Leader and high school senior voted saddest eyes, Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> he pleaded with his fellow Republicans to pass the bill, saying, quote, now is not the time to decide what to do or how to do it. Now is the time to do it. <laughs> yes. Yes, act now and ask questions later, like, what did we just do, and why the hell did we do that? <laughs> the current hang-up uh, is that under the new bill, states, individual states, could opt out of protecting people with pre-existing pre conditions, and a lot of moderate Republicans don't like that. But North Carolina representative and Norwegian man pretending he understands English, Robin <laughs> Pettinger, has a solution. Pettinger explains that if you have a pre-existing condition that your state won't cover, quote, People can go to the state they want to live in. <laughs> hey, kids, Dad's got pancreatitis. Road trip. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to be a real boon for state tourism. Look forward to signs like, Virginia is for livers. <laughs> I heart transplant New York. And come get an alabamputation. <laughs> And, of course, Florida's new slogan, we have painkillers. Wait, are you a cop? <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight.